brings us to our Tuesday main event at 5.45. Mr. Jim Brogan, a former NBA athlete turned basketball analyst, now world-renowned performance enhancement specialist. Jim, you walked out of the building just a couple weeks ago, and I was kicking myself. I thought, I should ask him this. I should ask him that. I, should, I didn't follow <laughs> up on this. So thank you for granting me a make good. I want to try better the second time around. Nice to be back. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Aztecs. Uh, you just have to look at the... Uh, first of all, do you think Dutch has the uh, roster to... To win the conference? Yes, no doubt about it. He has great athletes. He's got great basketball players. If you look at across the board, what they've accomplished as far as out-rebounding teams, defensively, all the categories you look at, they are above all their opponents. And just unfortunately, at Boise State, I mean, one guy goes off for 40-some points, and, you know, it's going to happen. But you didn't mention three-point shooting, where I think they're tied for 298th in the nation. As a guy uh, who's been around the game a little bit, how much is shooting physical? How much of is it mental? It's a big part of it. It's both. And you've got to all of a sudden have the confidence that you step behind that three-point line, you know what to do. And when I see guys start to miss and the ball's not going straight, then it becomes a mechanical issue. And you see that across the board with the pros also. Guys start missing, and it's not going straight through the air. There's no precision to it. That's going to be a big challenge. And surprisingly, I, I think Trey Kell is going to start picking it up. He's a guy that really, the last couple of years, was very good from behind the three-point line. And the game has gone that way. I mean, Seth yeah. Curry has changed the entire game. That three-point line is really close, too. I mean, it's not that far out. And I can see right now where, hey, the Aztecs have seen we haven't done that well behind the three-point line. Collectively, probably about 33%. Um, that, that's got to get up in the 37 38%, and that puts you in a lot of basketball games, and that wins a lot of games, too. All right, so let's talk about what I want you here for. Uh, <laughs> the melding of mind and body to improve performance, which I believe is your calling. Would you uh, agree with that? I've studied so much with a bunch of doctors for the last 30 years about the brain. You know, we want to know how does the brain react? How do we build new neural pathways? How can we get people to understand, well, yes, I can do it? Because what makes the difference between that superior athlete and the guy that has, or the woman that has all the, has the body, has the build, has everything, the speed, the, the quickness, but yet they don't seem to get to that level level of you know greatness they don't seem to get that level of talent because we have ability skill talent and what I call world-class and we've seen it's it's how they're thinking it's also what happens with their bodies and and their brains so I have really focused over the years on how do we impact the brain which will impact the thinking so you work with professional athletes uh, young athletes you work with underperforming sales teams you name it you're you, you work with them, right? We, we can cover a pretty broad spectrum just because everyone has a brain most of the time, you say. But and everybody wants to be world class. Everybody is looking to be world class. Now, are they willing to sacrifice? You know, some of the baseball players. I've got a couple of Major League Baseball players. you got to meet me at 6.30 in the morning. Why? That's the highest level of focus and concentration. You, have you ever had parents come home from the end of the day and they say to their kids, God, I'm worn out, and they look at you, well, you're not sweating. <laughs> you, you know, I don't see you sweating, Dad, Mom, what's going on? Well, they're worn out because neurologically they've had meetings and phone calls and there's been some angst at the office and some challenges, and so the brain will wear out quicker than the body will. Uh, we lifted this clip from your website at jimbroganconsulting.com. Com. Yes. Uh, we lifted this. Take a listen to this, and we'll get your reaction. If I don't come here today and teach you one new habit, you leave being the same. If I don't get you to get one new habit, you leave the same. I can't do that. I'm not getting paid to do that. Just one. I'm asking one. Let's set that up for me. Where was that? Uh, I don't remember. That, but that one thing I talk about, one new habit. Yeah. Do you know how difficult it is to get one new habit on yes. Monday? Especially January 1st. Everybody's got the New Year's resolutions. Yeah. Oh, boy, I'm going to get in shape. Oh, boy, I'm going to start writing my book. Oh, boy, I'm going to start writing poems. One new thing is such a challenge for people. So if someone's not mentoring them, if someone's not holding them accountable, and it doesn't matter what age, Paul. It doesn't matter what age. If someone isn't there to push, because the success is in the struggle. The You're, success is always in the struggle. I have a habit to recommend everybody that they can do easily. Get more sleep. Turn off the phone and, and leave the phone outside the bedroom. Well, you were so... I, I was so honored and privileged. You brought me in last week, and I talked about that book, The Distracted Mind. Don't let your kids, if anything, people listening, don't let your kids go to bed with that phone right by their face. Don't. All right, tell, uh, just some things I picked up. Tell me, what the, what's the rule of 21? Well, we had a theory of 21, meaning that if it doesn't work after 21 times, hit him with the theory of 42. And you just don't give up, and people miss that. I mean, if it's not going to work 21 times, go with the theory of 42. 
people, if you read all the books, and there's so much out there now, just read a Wikipedia page of the most accomplished people in the country. Anyone, entrepreneurs, painters, electricians, engineers. Go back to the mid-century, you know, the 15th century, and you see these people that didn't give up. It's not taught in school. It's something that's within us, but someone at the same time can bring it out if you show them because we learn so much by sight. Our, our brain is built by sight. 83% is by sight. So I have to see what you're doing if I'm going to follow or if I'm going to say, okay, I can do it. Why is success the struggle? Well, if you look at anything and anyone we've ever interviewed, we've been privileged to interview some of the most accomplished people in this country from business to sports to nonprofits. There's always a struggle in the beginning. There was always this struggle, and they worked through it. Today, everything is so simple for us, we don't work through the struggle. I mean, I can order a pizza and have it delivered by a drone. Why do I got to get in my car and go out in the cold weather? I mean, it's amazing to me. Everything is so simple. So the brain gets into this mode of, why? Well, I don't want to go through that struggle. Why would I do that? We, 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 I neglected to mention all the high-profile profile people you've worked with. We put together a collage of just some of the names that we, we found quickly. Do you prefer working with, as a professional athlete yourself, do you prefer working with professional athletes? The neat thing about professional athletes is that you have to get results right away. A professional athlete is good from game to game. In the NFL, you get 19 games. And you'll have NFL players say, we only play 16. That's the, there it is right there. The brain is telling them 16. No, 19 is the Super Bowl. Right, right. 19 oh, gets you through the Super Bowl. 162 games in baseball. No, 173. It gets us to the World Series. So if you don't impact how they're thinking, that's a brain thing, then they're going to all of a sudden acquiesce to, well, that's all we're supposed to do. It's like football. You play for two and a half seconds to six seconds. That's it. Then we get to go back and talk about it. Let's talk about it for 30 seconds. What do you want to do next? Uh, but just, and you also work with some Hollywood types. The guy, uh, is it Howard J? Uh, yeah, we, we try to keep things, things quiet. Oh, oh Ken Howard. Yeah, but Ken it, Howard. What was it like being around the uh, Hollywood types? Fascinating. Such creativity. Such creativity. And, and we, I think we teach, unfortunately, the creativity out of people in high school, college, sometimes even down to middle school. You got to do it this way. Sit down. Why can't a young person get up every once in a while and say, gosh, I lost my focus. I got to get my brain moving a little bit. I got to get blood in my brain. I got to stand up. You, I mean, sit, can you sit in a chair for no. 50 minutes and no, listen to someone go like this all <laughs> night? Come yeah. on. I, believe me, I, I have a lot of people tuning me out a lot. Uh, Jim, again, <laughs> you're going to leave this place. Brother. You're going to have to come back because I didn't. Even, I only got to half my questions. Uh, quickly, folks, tonight on the ASR, we got a bunch of games coming away. Uh, and we'll uh, recap our, some of our conversation with Jim Brogram. We'll, we'll try to get him back in and get the other half of my questions asked. You've just watched the KUSI News at 5 p.m. The KUSI News at 6 p.m. is coming around the bend.